Okay, um, we have some questions based on the progress of uh, both house bills. And yesterday we learned a little bit more about um, how bills can get um, um, stalled in committees and things like that. And we're kind of interested about where the bill is and the progress of why does it get uh, caught in a um, house committee, what it takes to get out. And I think the students have questions about what can we do as a group to help facilitate that or how does the public work on that. Okay, students, pay attention. Yeah. Who's going to ask the first question? Oh, he always. Oh, why don't I ask? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Nice and loud. How much does it cost for a bill to become a law? Law. Um. Well, there isn't a a value a, like a price tag to a bill. Um, it, it would be, that's a great question in the sense of if someone were to evaluate the amount of time that it takes because there's a lot of staff, a lot of staff involvement. So when a, somebody has an idea, um, there's initially a bunch of meetings that somebody has with the legislator and then the groups that are interested in the bill. Um, and then when it comes down to staff time, a bill goes to the code reviser which is a state employee who then spends some time to draft the bill in a particular way so it would um, match up with what the revised, the RCW is the acronym for Revised Code of Washington. That, those are our laws. Um, and then there's, uh, then there's the time of the legislator, their assistant, the time of the lobbyist, the, inter the stakeholders that all then spend time working on that bill so I don't there's not a value or a price tag and a bill it doesn't necessarily cost anything you don't have to pay to pass a law um, however there is a lot of time that's involved and that costs money um, I don't know what that I don't know what that number would be though okay thank you who's next yeah. no, so I have a question and like I, I testified for House Bill 1387 and I just want to know what happened. So 1387 um, is the bill that would treat assault weapons the same as um, handguns and, and other uh, firearms uh, that are currently regulated in our state. Um, it is currently stalled in committee, um, the committee, the Judiciary Committee. Um, t so what often happens is there's there's a great debate. There's a debate that occurs around a, a, around a law. Um, you testified on the public hearing component where everybody gets to weigh in, and then the chair of the committee evaluates whether or not. Um, there's a, th are there too many questions with the bill? Are there too many things that need to be worked out based on the, you know, people come and they testify and they're like, well, um, this part, this section of the bill is confusing to me, or I think the bill should go farther. Some people think that the bill maybe should be pulled back. And the, let the chair of the committee then evaluates whether or not they want to bring it to a vote of the committee. And the question that they have in mind is, do I have the votes? And some bills, um, in this particular case, the bill you guys chose to follow is, is quite co controversial. Uh, the debate around firearms and how our government regulates them or not regulates them is a huge issue. It's a constitutional um, question at our federal level and then at, our, at, and then at the state level as well. The in this particular case, the chair of the committee chose that this bill is not yet ready to go. I don't have the votes in order to, to move it along. And so they didn't bring it to a vote of the committee um, based on the amount of debate that was occurring within their caucuses. The caucuses are the Democrats all move to, they all will meet with one another and discuss um, the, the, the warrants of the bill. And then the, and the other party, the Republicans do the same thing and the, the the uh, minority member, so that's the person who doesn't have um, 
as much representation on the committee. They come back from their caucus and they talk with the chair of the committee and they're like, yeah, we don't have the votes for this. And then she says, well, or he says, um, I don't have the votes either. And so if they don't have enough votes, they don't bring it up for a vote for um, to move the bill along. So that is what is um, what has occurred with 1387. Um, it is currently still stuck. It is stuck in committee. Um, we have a biennial legislature. So any bills that are um, didn't make it past their cutoff this year, um, they are eligible to be debated again the following year. So this bill is tech would technically be alive for next session where um, in 2018, the, they could choose to bring it back and consider moving it along again if, if they choose so. Okay, thank you. Okay. Who wants to ask about Alessandra, Ali? About the bill, what you want to do where it is? The general announcement says that, that it was alive. Who wants to ask about that? Why? About Bill 1122, where it is. Yeah, someone needs to ask about that. Do you have a question? Do you have one? Can you ask her about this? What happened to the other bill? What was it? HB 122. Where it is. We've heard that actually. I think it's progressed. It's moved on. Where it is. Um, where's HB 112? What's it stayed in? Where is it at right now? So House Bill 1122 is the bill that um, would require the storage of firearms and impose penalties on people who don't properly store their weapons. Um, that bill is in a committee called the Rules Committee. And the Rules Committee is different than a policy committee where you all were able to observe a debate around, a, around the legislation the Rules Committee doesn't operate that way. So bills are first heard in a policy committee if, there's, if there is any, um, if they cost money for the state that the state has to hire people or, um, or it, it imposes taxes or it brings in, um, or like it, it, it imposes taxes so it brings in revenue, it goes through a fiscal committee. After those two committees, bills then are referred to rules where they hang, where they kind of hang out until a bunch of the people, the members of the rules committee convene and they decide what bills they're going to bring up for floor action. So if you were interested in assisting with this bill and bring it along, what you would be doing is writing to the rules committee members so this bill is sponsored by a Democrat. So you would focus on the Democrats of the Rules Committee and, and tell them how important you think this bill is. And will you please, and the term is, pull it. Pull the bill from Rules Committee. And everybody, depending on what the Rules Committee decides to do on a particular day, they all have at least one bill that they get to quote unquote pull from committee. Sometimes they get to two, pull two, sometimes they might pull three and they choose which bill they're going to move along in the process. So 1122 is in rules. Somebody needs to pull the bill. And once the bill is pulled, then it goes to the um, onto the floor calendar where then leadership decides which bills they're going to pull up and have a full debate of that chamber. So then all 98 members of the House of Representatives would um, hear a little bit about that bill. They don't. They well. I actually. I skipped. A, I skipped a step. They would all caucus on it. So the Democrats would all meet. The Republicans would all meet. The the staff who has been involved with that bill, the policy staff, they come in, and this is a closed. It would be a closed meeting, and they learn a little bit about the bill, and then when it's up for the up for a vote, they are all on the floor and the sponsor of the bill talks a little bit about the bill. Other people weigh in on whether or not they think people should or should not vote for it. And then it comes up for a vote where then they all in the House of Representatives, they all push a button and say yes, yay or nay on the particular bill. We as lobbyists or you as students um, would be observing uh, the a screen that shows where everybody's voting, and then you would see um, how how the bill um, how how the vote turns out. 
whether or not it's 98 to zero or 48 to 50, that would be a close vote. Um, and that's what we would wait to see with this bill is whether or not it gets pulled and then the debate of where it comes out on the floor calendar. Okay, thank you. Who's next? Who else has a question? Oh, she looks like short. I know. Oh, okay. I <laughs> Do we write the letter to Mr. Fitzgibbon or someone else? Um, I don't have a list of the rules of the of the members on rules committee in front of me, um, so I I can't think of who that would be. But uh, on the website, there are you would look up the rules committee in the House of Representatives and pick the members who have, uh, who, who are who are Democrat. And the reason you do that is the parties that sit, so whether they're Democrat or Republican, they're interested in moving along the policies of their members. So a Democrat would be interested in moving a Democrat bill along and vice versa. So although some might focus on the entire rules committee, I typically tell them, no, focus on the party of the spot the bill sponsor okay next question listen please <clears throat> so then uh when people vote is it only house bill 1122 and is it only 98 people in the house um yes there are only 98 people in the house of representatives um and they they are the ones who vote um when it comes up for a floor debate in the rules committee, there's not a vote um, that th that's typical. It's not a typical vote. So they go around the room, and each person then says, "I'm pulling this bill." Um, they all then the committee ultimately votes on the package of bills that they're pulling. But it's um, it's rare that there's dissent among among their, the the folks in the room uh, about the bills that they're pulling. So I wasn't sure if you were asked about the rules committee or a floor debate, but yes, everybody gets a chance to vote when it comes to the floor. Those 98 members will vote. So then how many votes do they need uh, to win by or the, the, I forgot, for like the bill to, to move on, to the bill to move on. You just need a simple majority. So a simple majority would be one one more vote than than right. the other than the other group. So 40, 40, 50, 49 to what would that be? Forty nine to what's minus? Uh, forty nine to forty forty nine to forty nine would. What's that? Fifty to forty nine. Okay. Thank you. Forty eight. Yeah. Nice and low. Bad math. It's too early. <laughs> nice and low. What would happen if there was a tie between in, in the committee between the Democrats and Republicans? Um, if so, if there's a tie. The presiding member, um, which in the House is the Speaker of the House. And in the Senate, it is the Lieutenant Governor, the President of the Senate. They br they will break the tie. Look at the Senate. Okay. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Say so thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh. Other questions? Vivian, do you have a question? <laughs> Um, so it seems like what we can do, class, we're going to be writing the letters, a letter to Mr. Fitzgibbon so they can pull it. Anybody have any follow-up questions? Okay, about what? Because that's our next step to get involved, right? I think now's your chance to ask a question. At least writing down who the is. How is this session compared to like other sessions over the years? Um, I can answer that question a lot of different ways. 
So technically, this session is different than others because it's what we call a long session. So I'll use the term again. We have a biennial legislature. So they work for they work over a two year um, time frame. Um, and that's because of the way that the way that our state budgets their um, operating dollars is they decide, OK, we're going to spend so much money for the year 2017 to 2019. And that budget year begins on July 1st and runs through the following or two, two years later and ends on June 30th. So this session is a long session where they set their policy and set the overall budget for those two years. So we they will convene for 105 days. So approximately from January through April, they meet and they discuss policy and they discuss budget. And then a year from now, they meet again for a short session, which is 60 days. Um, and the 60 day session is intended to um, make any corrections that they needed to the previous year. So this year's different than last year because we're in a long session. It's 105 days. Now speaking at a high, at a like a, a, a macro level, like a goal, a global level, this session is different because our state legislature is under a lot of stress because they are trying to figure out they are under they our state was involved in a court case and they were they did not prevail um and they are being told to say they, the 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 order of that court case says you need to fund kindergarten through 12th grade education you need to fully fund that that you have not been fully funding the education that you students are receiving and figuring out how to do that what what all does that entail because it's not just about your curriculum but it's about how you pay teachers do you fairly pay your teachers um are you covering all of the basics of education um do you have enough school counselors in your schools do you is there too many people in administration um you know that in so many schools you're in you're in um you're not you know they don't physically have the infrastructure to house all of the students there's a lot of questions involved with deciding how much it costs the state to fund to fund education so that ha that has been a discussion over 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 multiple years um, and the state has made a lot of progress in trying to meet that obligation to full the word is fully fund education this year is the most important year. If they do not figure it out this year um, or meet a number that satisfies the court, then they will then they will be imposed with with further penalties by our courts, likely be brought to court again and cost and then it will cost that much more money to figure out the solution again. So that is um, why this session is a little bit different. Um, than previous years because not only do they have to figure out how to pay for our jails and um, the other types of services that the state provides, they have to, they have a bigger, bigger problem with figuring out how to fund your school. Thank you. Um, uh, I have a question. Uh, has the Trump election impacted Washington state legislators this year? Um, it has indirectly and, and somewhat directly impacted our state. So when President Trump uh, uh, signed his executive order limiting immigration to from our for, to our state, our attorney general general, um, challenged that and said that is not lawful, and our state prevailed in that in in that in that challenge, and we had our state had a dr dramatic impact with that with the executive order of President Trump. Um, we I think what will be more impactful is if President Trump is successful with repealing the Affordable Care Act or what other people refer as Obamacare, 
which is essentially our the way that our national government provides health care, the system of health care to um, to our to our citizens. Um, our governor, Governor Inslee, is very, very concerned that if they repeal the Affordable Care Act, millions of people in Washington state will be without health care. And I think overall um, that will probably be much more impactful to our state than let's than than that executive order was. Um, but yet he has not taken that action. So we have we are waiting to see how that will impact our state. Um, but that's what a lot of people are very concerned about here in Olympia um, and throughout the state regarding their health care and whether or not they will be able to um, maintain the coverage that the health care coverage that they've had for the past few years. Okay. Can we another question? Can we just justify again? There will be another opportunity. There will be um, on if you are following um, 1122, the storage of firearms, the next opportunity to testify would be when this bill is pulled from rules, is debated on the House floor, and then it would it would go through the exact same pro. pro uh, process that you observed in the House of Representatives, it would go through that process in the Senate, um, where there would be a hearing uh, in a policy committee, um, th that, and that would be the, the next opportunity to testify. But there's a few, few hurdles in the way. Um, Asya, tell them we have one minute left. Uh, oh, we have one minute left of class. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Bye-bye. Everyone say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>